Hell, of course, is the most hated truth in the world today. Most gospel ministers don't preach about it. Many gospel preachers don't believe it anymore. Even in some Pentecostal circles, they don't believe there is a hell. They say it's incompatible with the preaching of God's love. They say, how can uh, a God of mercy send anybody to a burning pit of everlasting hell? But Jesus was the very first to warn of hell. He said, whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Jesus warned Capernaum, Bethsaida, and everyone who would reject his word, he said, you shall be brought down to hell. Jesus said, you serpents, generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus preached more about hell than he did about heaven. Jesus was the greatest preacher on hell in all this living word. Now let me try to explain to you from the word of God what hell is going to be like. Let me tell you what I believe it's going to be like. The Bible says, first of all, it's going to be a kingdom of total darkness, both literally and spiritually. His kingdom was full of darkness. That's Lucifer's kingdom. Now, the Bible said in God's kingdom, there's no need for, there'll be no night there. There's no need of a candle, no light of the sun. For the Lord God shall give the light. Jesus Christ will shine in his glory. He's the light of those in heaven. The city says, no need of the sun, nor the moon to shine, for the glory of the Lord to light it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Hallelujah. Hell is eternal darkness, not a speck of light. And it'll be so tormenting, so suffocating. And this is going to be a darkness created by God. Created by God. They will gnaw their tongues for pain. Jude warned, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. There's a darkness that cannot be defined by human reasoning. Peter said, a mist of darkness reserved forever. It's a mist that God has created that falls upon those in eternal hell. There was a darkness, remember, in Egypt, even a darkness which could be felt. It was a thick darkness. They didn't even move. They didn't even move in their house. The darkness was so thick they couldn't see anywhere in front of them. It was a darkness that was felt. Can you imagine the darkness, the literal darkness in hell? No one, you say, well, if there's fire, there's light. Not the liquid fire that God has created in hell. There's no light to that fire whatsoever. Jesus warned the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. More than that, it's a spiritual darkness. Outer darkness describes being cast further and further away from God. Now, folks, I don't know where hell is. Some people claim it's in the heart of the earth. Can you imagine waking up in that kind of company and looking around and there's nothing but sinners, nothing but the ungodly, and you are numbered among the transgressors, backsliders and compromisers on earth. The, the thought of God of holiness and purity is going to die. Men are going to prefer darkness. Now listen to this, please. Believing a lie, reprobated, made to believe that heaven with the Lord would be worse than even hell. Now, listen to me, please. You may not believe this, but everything in the Scripture proves it. I used to believe that if in hell God came with an offer to, to come, I, I forgive you, enter the gates of heaven, it would not be accepted by one person in hell. In spite of the torments, in spite of what hell is, the Bible said men prefer darkness rather than light. And men will believe a lie, and the devil will have them so deceived that they would believe. Don't believe it. It's a trick. That light that he's talking about is going to be worse than you have here, and the total deception will be that even if God offered it, it would not be accepted. Now, hell is more than just being abandoned or forsaken by God. The Bible said those in hell are going to suffer the vengeance of God. The flaming fire taking vengeance, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now listen to this, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. For we know him, he said, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, saith the Lord, for it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Now, those that are in hell are not in the hands of the devil. They're in the hands of an angry God. And he turned out, just think for a moment. Satan himself is going to be tormented night and day. 
We, we, we have the idea that Satan's going to be the tormentor. He's going to be tormented himself, night and day, all through eternity. He's going to be occupied with his own torment. The devil was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, and he shall be tormented day and night. Revelation 20.10. But you see, this word vengeance is retaliation. God said, I'm going to repay. Now what kind of vengeance, what kind of payday for mockers and scoffers like those who, who produce these movies like The Last Temptation of Christ and the mockery of Jesus Christ? I, 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 I can't even conceive in my mind the kind of vengeance that God will have prepared. If God can just speak a world and the world is destroyed by a flood, if he merely breathes his breath and fire falls on the whole population of Sodom and Gomorrah, if he just speaks a word and dust turns into lice, and he speaks a word and serpents cover the wilderness, and Egyptians are covered with boils, and all of that when God's anger was restrained. That wasn't the wrath of God. It was just a touch. Could you imagine what his wrath would be? The Bible says that those who are in hell are going to have special bodies prepared, instruments of unrighteousness. They're going to prepare bodies instruments of unrighteousness, instruments of destruction. God, even though we get a new body, there will be a new body for those who are cast into hell, an eternal body that cannot be consumed. It has a worm that will never die. I'll explain what that worm is at the conclusion of my message. Hell is a place of rage and hatred toward God. But here's what men are going to do. Men, when they were scorched with great heat, they blasphemed the name of God which had power over these plagues, but they repented not to give him glory. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and sores, and they repented not of their deeds. You go to Roosevelt Hospital up here. You go to this uh, hospital just two blocks from here. What's the name of that? St. Clair's. It's all, all AIDS now. And you go in there, the AIDS ward, like I have many times. And you'll see the most hatred for God you've ever seen by men and women with AIDS. They're about to die, and they curse God. You will hear more cursing of those they have been plagued and they will curse God. Now I'm talking, and I'm not talking about homophiliacs. I'm not talking about those who, who, who got it uh, without in, being involved themselves into gross sin. But those who've been in gross sin and they're, they're suffering the vengeance, they have an anger toward God, even though they're about to look God in the face. There's an anger there. Even on the streets, I've seen men dying with AIDS, banging their heads against the stone, against the curb, and cursing God. There's no, been, there's no repentance. Do you think men will repent if they won't repent with the restrained anger of God? Are they going to repent when the full anger of God comes? I asked the Holy Spirit to show me what was the greatest cause of torment in hell. And I was shocked at the, re at the answer he gave me. Why are they going to be railing and gnashing and gritting their teeth? Why this, why this terrible rage in hell? Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. The greatest torment in hell is going to be the cross of Jesus Christ. Because it's an offense. Here now in time, can you imagine the offense it will be in hell when the whole story is told? When they in eternity standing before the judgment learn how simple the cross was, how simple grace was, and all the good deeds and charitable works and self-will created a sense of false security? The Jews will say, I kept 613 commandments. I went to synagogue, I washed my hands, I washed my pots, I washed my pans, I studied the Torah, I studied it all. And then to have this revelation that Jesus said, just look and live. It was so simple. And many of you that heard the God, you, some of you have heard enough gospel to save China. We preach the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. You hear it in radio, television, every you got it coming out your ears. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when you go, when you wake up in eternal hell and remember the simplicity of the cross of Jesus Christ? That's the torment. I missed something so simple. If it had been hard, you could explain it or you could excuse it in your mind, but you can't excuse the simplicity of the cross of Jesus Christ through an eternity. And for without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. 
Satan will rage forever because the cross cost him his power, put him to open shame and destroy this kingdom. They're going to rage, shake their fist against the cross of Jesus Christ. And all through eternity it was too obvious, it was too simple. How could I have known it was so simple? Now there's some other aspects about hell I want to talk about. It's a place where men's lust will burn forever and never be satisfied. Now this is hard for us to comprehend, but I want you to think about it for just a minute. The lust that now indulges the sinner is going to burn worse through hell. These bodies fitted for destruction will still be lusting away in hell. You say, well, how could there be a lust problem in hell when there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth? You explain to me how Rock Hudson, who knew he was dying with AIDS and still skin and bone, got on an airplane from Los Angeles and went to the bars in San Francisco and was still connecting just before he died, still connecting with homosexuals in gay bars about to die. He's still burning in his lust. There are men walking like skeletons out here. Walking skeletons, still trying to work a trick. The lust will rage and can't be satisfied. The Bible said hell's a lake of fire. Five times the scripture calls hell a lake of fire. A fire which burneth. Unknown like, you know God has elements that we don't know anything about. So don't try to figure it out by human elements that exist today. This, these are elements, supernatural elements. It has no light. Elements we know nothing about. The Bible said men shall seek death there and won't be able to find it. Hell, the Bible said, will never end. It's everlasting. You can't, if you stop and think that God never was and never will be ended, you, if you stop any day and try to stretch your mind back as far as you can go and find there's no beginning of God, you can go crazy. I don't do that. God had no beginning. He has no end. It's a circle. You can't find any cut in it. Our minds can't conceive the everlastingness of hell. We can't even calculate it. Now, who's going there? The Bible says the majority of mankind is going to hell. The disciples said, Lord, are there few that will be saved? Jesus said, enter at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction or to hell. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leads to life, and few there be that are going to find it. Now you think of New York City and 16 million people, and most of them are going to hell. Paul visited the New York City of his time, Athens. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city holy, the whole city given over to idolatry. Athens went to hell. Rome went to hell. All the great cities, the Sodom, Gomorrah, all the cities in have gone to hell. New York is going to hell. The majority are going to hell. I thank God that he, we're one of many lights he's raised up here in New York City, especially this bright light right on Broadway, because the Lord's, just like he's standing at the gates of hell, where men are falling into hell, he's, he's, he's established his arms stretched out by you and me. We are here at Broadway, stretched out his arms and says, Come, look and live. Don't go this way. God's trying to push back the hordes that are rushing into hell. When we think of hell, we think of those going there are the obvious. The Bible said the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. But the Bible said whoever is not written in the book of life, whosoever is not found in the, written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The only people who are saved are those whose names are written in the book of life. There's a great white throne judgment and there's a book. The Bible said, I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God. The books were open. Now the book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things written in the books according to their works. Jesus made this promise. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed with white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. I'll confess his name before my Father and all his angels. Do you know your name's written in the book of life tonight?